Let's get to H2O. It still isn't managing to stem its outflows. The Natixis backed fund manager saw assets drop for a sixth consecutive session. Money has flooded out since last week amid concerns over illiquid holdings. Our next guest is swimming against the tide, though, with a buy rating on Natixis. Joining us from Paris is Lorraine Juarez, equity research analyst at UBS. Lorraine, is this just a case of, uh, you know, be greedy when there's blood on the streets? Hi, Matt. Well, basically, um, we turn buyers of Natixis. We think that the valuation today is discounting an extreme scenario on which we basically put a low probability. So you say it's a low probability that we get this extreme scenario, Lorraine. Good morning. But what kind of scenario do you expect to see then for Natixis? Do you have to assume that Natixis uh, manages to stem the outflows from H2O or, or that, that, that H2O manages to stem the outflows? That, that's basically what we expect. I think what we calculate basically is that the share price today assumes that not only H2O will lose all its AUM, but also there will be spillover onto other affiliates. In our view, H2O is doing the right things to try and limit the outflows. And actually, um, they posted a number of press release saying that the outflows are actually coming down, and they also start to see material inflows. We also don't expect spillover onto the other affiliates. We think the other affiliates of Natixis investment managers have a good enough reputation not to have a contagion effect. So what do you think uh, H2O did that was right? Are you talking about moving the distressed assets into what they term a deep value fund? Do you think that's going to be the right move? And do you expect a recovery in H2O's flows as a result as well? So the things they've done is first, they remove entry fees until further notice um, to facilitate inflows. They also start to reduce um, the portfolio they have in private bonds, which are, um, far to say, illiquid. And they also mark down to transactional value uh, the rest, the remaining part of the private bonds. This means that if you actually get into H2O today, you might uh, get the benefits of a higher value of the bonds if um, they were to sell it at a better value than the transactional value they got today. Now, I know uh, some press articles yesterday were saying that they were going to put these private bonds in and other vehicles. But when you look at H2O website, they actually said that they don't have an intention to do this. Now, what we expect is we still expect some outflows at H2O. Uh, we are going for 10 billion. Um, this is equivalent to the level of inflows that they had last year. So we kind of go for a first in, first out sort of scenario. Um, and we'll have to see, uh, we continue to monitor this law and we'll have to see how, how, how things evolve. Uh, Lorraine, more broadly, do you have concerns about a mismatch of liquidity within some, some of these funds, H2O or other funds that are similar. We've talked about this with a number of guests recently, and Mark Carney talked about how some of these investment products are maybe built on a lie because investors think they can or, or should be able to withdraw their money instantly, and yet the assets they hold are not able to be sold instantly. Are you concerned about that mismatch in liquidity? Um, we, we, we read about um, regulators' concern. Uh, we have to see how they intend to potentially regulate that. Um, there are currently some regulations around illiquid investments. So you're, you're not allowed uh, for usage to have more than 10% of your AUM in the form of illiquid assets. So there is already some regulation on the matter. Let's see what the regulator does now. Um, so. It's not unusual to have a little bit of like illiquid assets as part of your portfolio.